Hey guys, welcome to Reality Witch, a podcast where I, Jesse Nails, talk all things reality, witchy, and weird. Each week, I talk about pop culture news, our favorite shows, and of course, some witchy shit. Get ready for some laughs, hot takes, and horoscopes, and join this pop culture coven. Hello, witches. Phew, how are we? We're on episode 69, people. Ayo. (laughs) Wow, what a joke. What a joke. I know I was gone again. Sorry if there were, if there was no warning for you guys. Um, But, you know, I had full intentions of recording last week and being good and being responsible and scheduling it to go out on Wednesday. But when you pack last minute and want to clean the house and want to get a last minute workout in so you don't look four months pregnant without being four months pregnant in a bathing suit, you run out of time. So I did not get to record an episode for you guys last week. Um, for those that don't know, I went to Mexico. Um, and speaking of being four months pregnant, I'm already tired of the tight clothing. Every year I get all jazzed up for summer, time for to be in shorts, time to be tan, time for skirts, tank tops, crop tops, be outside. And then I remember that while things might fit great in the morning, when I put them on by lunchtime, you know, slash sometimes dinner time, they are tight. The bloat is real, people. The fluctuation that happens to my body is alarming. Very, very alarming. Um but remember that I did do post two Patreon episodes, a whole whopping two episodes, okay? I'm going to post more this week and get us all caught up on pig royalty. And then um, I might add some more episodes like that show Un- Unexpected on TLC. I don't know. There's a bunch of random shit that, like I said, that I watch that I might put on there. Or maybe I'll just do some recaps of some Bravo shows that I just typically don't do recaps of. Um, but again, where was I? Like I said, I was in Mexico. If you follow me on Instagram, you might know that I was in Cabo for my friend's wedding. It was fucking great. Travel this time around was 10 times better. I mean, thank God. I don't think I mentally, emotionally, psychologically, physically, all the things Lee could could go through another travel situation like I did in Jamaica. I also wasn't really that anxious about it because if something did happen, probably way easier to find another flight to Cabo. Um, So, you know, we were good. However, I did see a lot of fucking flights were canceled and God bless, we made a vacation out of this and went early and stayed a whole week because the flight the day before we flew out, the flight we would have taken was completely canceled. And there's only one nonstop a day from Southwest. That's what we fly. And then like, I feel like if we would have waited a few days later, like, I mean, who knows? So we were Gucci. Thank God. Got to the airport early. My friend has 25 credit cards because she's psychotic. Um, she does that thing where she signs up. I mean, she's not like irresponsible. She's just a crazy person has 25 credit cards because she does that thing where she sees deals, signs up, gets all the perks. Pretty much every credit card gives you the same perks nowadays, but she got this Amex strictly for the lounge use because she planned to spend a lot of time in the airports, I guess. (laughs) I mean, I'm not going to lie. The lounges are nice. They are nice. Is it worth the $600 $600 annual fee that comes with the cheapest Amex you can get. I don't know, but this was nice. Um, so we got to all hang out in the lounge with her. That's the best thing about that Amex card is that I got to benefit off of it. We all got mimosas. Greatest news in the world the night before is that I found out, I didn't realize this because I haven't flown Southwest in a few months. We, we can drink on the plane. Holla fucking you. Whoa, Jesus. Wow, the the fucking heavens didn't want me to say that word because aren't we we're in Lent and I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to say Alleluia during Lent. I'm pretty sure that's that's the rule. Hold on, let me look this up. Actually, this could be a good 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 fun fact. All right, here we go. This is the this is why you guys tune in for educational purposes. Catholics choose to fast from saying the word 
Alleluia, which means praise Yahweh. Yahweh means God or Lord or whatever. (laughs) Because we are saving up all of our joy and praise for the Lord on Easter Sunday. Fasting from saying Alleluia during the Lenten time of sacrifice and repentance helps us appreciate the depth and meaning of the word. Does it? I don't think it does. Um, If you go through all of Lent, don't experience the release of great joy with the news of the risen Lord on Easter Sunday, then you are missing the point of this season. (laughs) Oh, God. That next sentence was unintentionally directed straight at me. This practice also serves to remind us that although this life may be filled with trials, sacrifice, and struggles, there is an incredible joy that awaits us when we reach heaven. Like, this is unbelievable. It's, okay, I'm done with that. Holy shit. That was from catholiclink.org. Probably a great website. Honestly, I should save that for later. Um, God, I stopped. I mean, obviously I stopped practicing Lent a long time ago, but Lent was just so insane during school. The best thing about Easter is that we basically got like a hundred days off because we would have off for Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Monday. Um, so that was probably like the one positive from it. We also would get pizza for lunch on Fridays because they couldn't possibly think of anything else to give us that didn't have meat. Um, And then I would also have pizza again most of the time at home (laughs) because my parents, it was mostly like my dad. My dad also couldn't think of anything to give me without meat. So it was just pizza all around at the Nalen household. Okay. Wow. Where are we? That was a long way. We took the back road there. Um, Okay, so we had some drinks on the airplane. Everything was going great. And I look over and Kyle's nose is fucking bleeding. I mean, why? Talk about a nightmare. Nightmare. He puts a tissue up there. Luckily, I had a few left in my bag. Now I have to restock. He shoved it up there. You know, just like kind of like plug it pulls it out and it's like this fucking I mean trigger warning dark thick blood coming out and it just then because at first like wasn't that bad I mean if you're like a bloody nose kid like I was and he was like you, you can tell by the color of blood if it's bad or not so like before it was kind of just like this fun bright red color and I was like oh okay cool like it's probably not that bad we're just dr- perpetually dry as shit out here and we've been having these like intense temperature swings, which like doesn't help. So I was like, okay, great. Nope. He took that tissue out. It was dark and thick and then just started running down his face. And like truly like no pun intended, but this was like a code red nosebleed, like bad. It's also mortifying because next to us is this poor young girl. She's probably like 18 or younger and she couldn't like her family couldn't all sit together and she's sitting next to us and she's seeing this all happen. And I literally had to turn and be like, I'm really sorry because I mean, it was disgusting. He had blood all over his hands. He got blood on his fucking beard that thankfully is now gone. (laughs) So. We have one tissue left. I'm like, dude, go to the fucking bathroom. Try to be chilling, chill about it because it's gross. It's like you're on an airplane. It's like if you're sick, like we need to throw up, bloody nose, whatever. You don't want other people to know. Well, my friend in front of us slash the bride just screams at the flight attendant like, excuse me, he has a bloody nose and he needs napkins. And I was like, dude, you just, sc- I think the whole plane now knows that he has a bloody nose. She goes, oh, sorry, like my headphones were in and I just like can't really hear. <laughs> I was like, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. So they bring him all these supplies. Like, honestly, it was kind of nice. We got a shit ton of like sanitary wipes that I kept. And like, luckily the mask hides any visuals. So he just like shoved more tissue up there and, you know, put the mask up. But Still wasn't great, um, but it stopped. And then we get to Cabo, get to the resort. It's fucking beautiful. I mean, vacations where you can just wake up and throw on a bathing suit and just go to the pool and not leave for the rest of the day are truly the best. 
like a swim up bar. Like a swim up bar is hilarious because because it is the most standard thing at these resorts and like probably like the cheapest thing these pe- people can provide because it's literally just like a bar and it's just like a, an empty pool in the pool and it kills it. I mean, we were just basically living at the swim up bar. Um, but I unpack when I first get there and Kyle thinks it's absurd that I unpack. And I think there's a handful of people that probably also think it's absurd to unpack. I immediately have to empty my suitcase of all things. I, I don't trust my packing skills enough to keep my clothes wrinkle free. And I also don't trust my ironing skills enough to, um, to just, to, to iron anything because I could totally see myself ruining something that I packed. Um, so first night there, we go to dinner with the bride and groom's family and some friends at Hibachi. Um, this is where I would just like to say that the groom and Kyle just blacked out every night. And I, I mean, every night there may be one night in there, maybe the last night they did not but every night. Kyle has this like vacation mode where he definitely gets possessed by a, a demon and by a demon, it's like a very good, fun, you know, loving life demon. So it's not like terrible, but he just, he transforms. And so he blacked out every night. Meanwhile, I'm terrified of the water. I got a bad <laughs> case of Montezuma's and this was like years and years ago, but I'll never forget it. And it lasted like two weeks. and. I couldn't stop shitting and I felt like I was in labor and I was terrified to get it again. So I was hyper aware of the water, but this place like didn't really want to give you the water. Like they had bottled water, but you had to really ask for it. And if you asked for more than a handful, they were like, "Ugh, all right, like really? Okay. I can only give you a four. And it's like, they were mini water bottles nonetheless. So I woke up one morning. I think it was like the first morning. We were out of water. Kyle said he woke up to the sound of it, this the can opening, just like, like really loud at 6 a.m. And it was me drinking a Pepsi because I needed liquid in my mouth because, you know, hungover, dry mouth, traveling the day before, probably just, I've probably been dehydrated since last Tuesday. Um, it wasn't good. Wasn't fucking good. But, you know, I was nervous. People were dropping like flies. All right, people came, some people got sick, and some people didn't recover. So I was, I did not want to be one of those people. Day of the wedding, groom was, groom was no bueno. No bueno. The universe picked that day to have this guy be the most hungover he's been on the trip, probably because he wasn't allowed to drink all day. So he couldn't really tap into like alcoholism. Um, but alcoholism was setting in for all of us by this day because I also chose not to drink. I wanted to be like fresh. You know, like when you're like when you're drinking all day, you're in the sun. By the time like four o'clock hits, you're like legit a zombie. Like you don't know how to function. You can't get you can drink the rest of the night. You can't get any more drunk. You're tired by like 9 p.m. Like things just aren't working right. So we didn't really want to feel like that for the wedding. So none of us really drank that day. You know, took a while to like drink a lot of water, hydrate, and, and bounce back. We had to give him a lot of Tums, a lot of carbs, a lot of Adderall, a lot of Pepto. We, he needed all of it just to keep him upright. He said he, he, we were outside getting, like, at this taco truck, threw up in a trash can next to the taco truck. I think he said he, like, projectile vomited on a wall in the bathroom. And then it's, we're approaching, we're approaching like it's time to start getting ready time, like lunchtime. So it was touch and go there for a while, but you know, the bounce back, luckily he got it together. I knew he would, but you know, it was, so it was a little, it was a little unnerving there for a second, but honestly, it was like the best wedding I've ever been to. Um, I've been to a lot of shit weddings in my 32 years on this ball of misery, um, they had good music, good food. Bride had a minor hiccup during the wedding, but that was solved by a finger down the throat and more Adderall. So we were Gucci there. Um, it was kind of hilarious because I gave her like a little bit of Adderall to hopefully sober her up. But then immediately after giving her that, that's when she could throw up. And so then I just had to give her another one. So I'm like, well, that's still not down there. Like the, the sickness was gone. 
but you know, we needed to make sure she was going to sober up even more. She blamed the illness on the one bite of red meat she had at the dinner. Um, so, but not the, it definitely like wasn't the drinking. It was, the, it was the red meat, which, you know, I believe her. Why not? I don't eat red meat anymore. Um, but I drank a lot. I drank every day and now I need a detox. So I'm not drinking today. I'm not drinking during this podcast. I've had heartburn since fucking Monday. So I'm on day three of not drinking and I deserve a fucking award for that. Okay. I need to get out all of the vodka pineapples, all of the champagne, all of the tequila out of my pores and out of my beer gut that I have acquired. Talk about bloating. Like I would put on, like I'd wake up basically like emaciated because I just like don't eat that much, especially when I'm drinking. And we wouldn't really eat dinner because like it's just kind of like re- resort style. Like a lot of times you have to like wait in line to get the meals. But by the time dinner came around, like we wanted to have fun. So I'd wake up like feeling so thin. I'd go to the pool and like I would have put on like a little, I'd always put on like denim shorts to like wear as like a cover up. Spend all day at the pool. Put the shorts back on and go back to the room, tight as shit. Like, and again, not really consuming food, just a lot of fluids. So, terrible. But I'm sure I'll be ready for some wine by the weekend. I mean, I will say these last two trips of being at a resort, they do make me crave like some good wine and champagne. Like, because the stuff they have is like really not that great because it's all free. I think you can probably buy better stuff for extra money, but it's just, you know, it's just so so because it's all inclusive. But all in all, it was a great fucking trip. But oh, and I've also been like really wanting like a piercing. I really want to get my nose pierced again now that my ears have healed. Um, and I also want to get another tattoo. But I'm honestly like spending money quicker than I can make it. And it's, I honestly just might run out. I might run out of money. Luckily, I'm pretty good about not touching my savings, but that doesn't mean shit when you just buy everything on a credit card. So we're a little, you know, we're a little in the red zone there. Oh, and speaking of money, because I'm apparently geriatric, I acquired a stiff neck and shoulder on day two of my trip. Can like, moving my head hurts. Um, my pores are so disgusting since I stopped taking birth control for the first time in 15 years. And I don't know if like, like I went on vacation thinking like, okay, great. Like, you know, when you're in pools, like that shit always clears up your skin. No worse. My pores are absolutely disgusting. And, and then I went to the chiropractor today, um, for my hips. So between the Cairo today that costs money, I'm getting a facial tomorrow for my disgusting face, and I am getting a massage for my back on Friday. And I'm well aware this all sounds nice. Like, wow, like luxury, first world problems, but like I'm uncomfy. Okay. I never usually do this many things in one month, let alone like the same week. Like, it's either like, okay, I'm treating myself to a massage, or okay, I'm treating myself to a facial. Like, this is absurd, but like it has to be done. Like, it's everything is like the worst it could possibly be at this point. Um, oh, and apparently I've been hearing this on TikTok too. Speaking of body issues, I guess like from years and years of sucking in in the early odds, it's like doing something weird with women's like bellies and guts and it's harder to tone them. Yeah. So because everyone was fucking anorexic and wearing low rise jeans, Paris Hill in that required me to suck in and because brands didn't make any size is big enough to fit me in a low rise fashion. I was sucking in all the time and now I'm worried I'm permanently fucking fucked up. So things are going really great. Okay. But what's on the show? Honestly, not sure. This might be a wild one. For news, there's definitely a lot of like Bravo news, like Mike from Shaw's being arrested, some Erica Jane shit, the slap that everyone's already talked about. Um, for shows, we're going to talk about Housewives of OC, Jersey, Summer House. Maybe we'll touch on some like TLC shit for a minute. And then the witchy shit. <laughs> Okay, let's dive into some news. One thing I did forget to tell you guys, though, I think 
sorry if I did already talk about this. I get confused. We we know this. Um, Isaac Plath commented on my fucking, like, it's a TikTok, but I put it on a reel, like a welcome to Plathville reel. He commented on it for the second time. I deleted his comment the first time. And he must, like, every so often, like, search like welcome to Plathville. And even though he like already commented on this one, like I think he like might have forgot because his comment was missing since I deleted it. Dude, he's like, this is what fucking pisses me off. Uh people like you don't realize like you see 45 minutes of our life and blah blah. Like, okay. He's a kid, so like I'm not gonna say anything. But homie, your parents suck ass. The whole world can't stand your fucking parents. The people that live in your town can't stand your fucking parents. So maybe don't maybe don't search your name if you're gonna if you're gonna get your feelings hurt because they aren't great. They don't come off really well on television. Um, yes, I probably am a little too mean. I call the mom pig mom plath and I call the dad creepy dad plath in almost all of my videos. So that's a little like upsetting. Like I might have to block him if he keeps commenting because, you know, I'm still going to talk about the plaths. And if I have to worry about his ass, like getting upset and like rage commenting, then I don't, I don't know what to tell him, but like he shouldn't, he really shouldn't be surprised by what people think of his parents. So moving on. So I'm glad I remembered to jot this one down because I definitely would have forgotten it. But I saw before my trip that there is this um, blind going around that Yolanda lied about Zane hitting her. So you remember back in October of 2021, um, Yolanda pressed charges on Zane Malik, said he said a bunch of fucked up shit to her and pushed her into a dresser. Um, A lot of his fans immediately were like, no way, which like, of course they would, but Bravo and Cocktails got an anonymous submission that, um, and the post was titled Pretty Little Liar, and it claims to have been sent in by Hadid's former assistant. And it said, word on the street from her former assistant is that this ex-housewife and mama to top models made the whole thing up about her daughter's baby daddy. She didn't like him. So they're basically saying that she made it up so that like Gigi would leave him. There's more to Pretty Little Liar. She wanted him to be sent to England to be done with him, as in he can't come to the States at all. Deported. Completely fabricated the story, but since he's not exactly sober, it's easy to get over on him. Like she had his people in her pocket. Really dark stuff. Don't think he, don't think he his daughter, his baby mama knew the plan. Don't think her sis did either. Um so honestly, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, might believe this. I might believe this. Yolanda, is the, I think when she was on the show, personally, for me at least, I liked her. I think she came off well. And then I think we fell in love with like Gigi and Bella. But as the years went on, it's been very clear that she, mm, she's a little cray cray. She lied about giving her daughter's plastic surgery. Bella just came out and said she had a fucking nose job when she was 14. When her face wasn't even like, was it 14 or 16? I don't know. Like, when she wasn't even like an adult yet, basically. Um, and then, and like, she's mad that her mom let her do it. And honestly, her mom probably told her to do it. She like made weird racial slurs. She said her Gigi would look like a lesbian if she kept playing volleyball. Like she does weird shit. So I don't know, kind of wild, but I could totally see this actually being true. Mike from Shaw's of Sunset was arrested on March 27th for domestic violence. So the LAPD confirmed Monday that the officers were called of, responded to a call of unknown trouble at 10 p.m. And Mike was arrested for intimate partner violence with injury, which I th- I've heard that just kind of means like, he physically like it's like I want a couple like and he physically did hurt her like it wasn't like yelling or just kind of like screaming um oh yeah if I just would have kept reading it would have explained that uh, much more clearly um it's another legal term for domestic violence and it's used when there is a visible injury on the victim Ugh, it's really shitty 
Um, he was booked on March 28th around 1 a.m. Um, and it's a felony. He was given a $50,000 bond and held until 6.30 a.m. And then he was released and he's due back in court July 25th. Um, obviously, they deny all the alle- allegations. And it, however, he has shared a series of cryptic graphics on his now deleted Instagram stories recently, including one that read, your life is your responsibility. Your success is your responsibility. Your failure is your responsibility. Your reaction is your responsibility. Your behavior is your responsibility. Hmm. Um, Gigi also, I think, just tweeted like, I'm like about like no comment or something. So I don't know. This is really sad. She does have kids. I'm sure the kids probably live with them. I don't know if the kids were there though. He, I don't, I don't know. He's just a wild card. Like he, can be so sweet, but then he can also be not, I mean, not sweet. Like, I'm just being like on TV, he can come across so well, but then he's also like pretty much always controlling to any girlfriend, fiance, or wife that he has. Um, so this will be interesting. I don't know if Shaz is coming back, but I will say Shaz always brings, brings the drama because these people are maybe the most terrible people on the planet. They claim to be best friends, they will stab each other if they have to. Like, it's it's not it's not the kind of friendship that like most people probably think of, but either way, this is ridiculous. All right, we're gonna talk about the slap just a little bit. I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of people you're I'm sure you're tired of hearing about it. There's honestly just like a few things that like people are talking about related to it that are just kind of like weird to me. The first one being, of course, the the blaming of the woman. Okay. Everyone's saying, well, she he laughed. He thought the joke was funny. But then when he saw her face, that's when he knew he had to do something. Like, okay. Okay, sure. Yeah, her scowling at Chris Rock about her having alopecia is really the reason why Will got up. He was he just would have sat there and laughed. Like, this is not her fault. Like he like Even if he did think it was funny, maybe he had, like, a bunch of thoughts go through his head. Like, you don't know. So that's kind of, like, annoying to me. The other thing that's very annoying to me is everyone being like, Kanye's banned from the Grammys and he didn't even physically hit anyone. Uh, Yet, like, this is insane to me. Like, people are forgetting what, like, emotional abuse is and what threats are and what, like you know, emotional violence is like, you know, you don't need to like, do we need to wait until he hits somebody? Is that like, do, have we just forgot everything? Have we forgot who OJ Simpson is? You know, like they banned rightly. So Kanye West from the Grammys, because first thing he peed on his Grammy last year, he hates the fucking Grammys. Are you kidding me? He's been talking shit on the Grammys for years. So one, that's why he was banned. Two, um, he's making racial slurs on his Instagram. Three, he's threatening to kill, beat up, hurt all the above Pete Davidson. Four, he performs with Marilyn Manson and loves him. Although Marilyn Manson was nominated for an award from what I hear at the Grammys. So maybe that wasn't a reason for the Grammys banning him. Um, let's see. What else does he do? I don't know. He's a terrible fucking person. And the logic that because he hasn't physically hurt anyone yet, but Will has. So why is Kanye banned from it's all fucking bullshit. Shut up. Okay? We're not talking every time some black man fucks up, we're not talking about Kanye West. This is a separate a separate issue. I mean, nothing drives me crazy more um but yeah i don't know where this is going i just saw like the fucking academy is meeting to talk about will's actions i don't even know what that means the academy at this point could be a group of five aliens that get together in a room and just like poke at each other's foreheads and decide things like who's the academy i don't trust the academy anyway because leonardo dicaprio should have about I don't know, 25 Oscars under his belt, and he has one. So the Academy got it. The Academy is 
been on my shit list for quite a while now. Quite a while. So, but that's all you're going to hear about me from the slap. You know, you don't need my opinion. Just stop blaming Jada. Stop comparing him to Kanye West. Just stay focused, people. Uh, Speaking of Kanye West adjacent, Pete Davidson, I guess, met Kim's kids this weekend. Um, He at least met North because that's who he was photographed with driving around. Um, This is wild. I mean, this might be a little bit more legit than I thought. A little bit more legit. Um, she, I, do I still think it's going to last? Absolutely not. Nope. She's not going to stay with him. There's no way. Um, and then at that point, we are going to have to send out an SOS for Pete Davidson because I think he is an emotional guy. Uh, he was not good after Ariana Grande broke up with him. And... Ariana Grande is not Kim Kardashian, so we are going to need some wellness checks when that day comes. I just, I just can't see it. I'm sorry. I just can't. The age difference, I can't get over it. I think she is having, for the first time in her life, a lot of fun. I think she's finally with a guy that's really nice, a guy that thinks she is the best fucking thing on planet Earth, and she just doesn't know what that feels like. But one day, she's going to wake up and be like, um, what's going on here? Would I date Pete Davidson? Yes. This is nothing against Pete Davidson. <laughs> this is just uh this is just a Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson situation. You know, I think she wants to be part of the cool crowd. I think she wants to hang out with Courtney and Travis, maybe hang out with Megan Fox and MGK. I think she is into it because Again, I know people can't stand all those little groups. I think they all actually love each other, and I think they treat each other pretty well. I think Travis Barker probably as ex- treats Courtney finally like the way she needs to be treated. He's not in, you know, drunken-induced, like, chaotic tornadoes like Scott was. Uh, MGK isn't, you know, old, pervy Brian Austin Green. like. They're just all nice to each other. Like, I just think Kim's not used to that. Like, look at Kim's dating record. It's fucking terrible. But it's going a lot longer than I expected, that's for sure. All right, we got some new Erica Jane news on the heels of, is it the heels or the toes of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills starting? I think on the heels. We're on the heels of the Real Sides of Beverly Hills starting. Oh, you know what else I have, guys? I have another clicky ear. Another one. I'm a mess. Something's not going right inside of me. Um, so she's been labeled the front woman in Tom Girardi's alleged fraud scheme in a $50 million racketeering lawsuit. She's been named in a new case from Edelson, which accused her of using her public platform to prolong Girardi's firm's alleged scheme. The victims of Tom's fraud have had to sit back and watch Erica spend obscene amounts of money, and they had nothing. This is a giant step forward in obtaining real accountability for what was the largest criminal racketeering enterprise in history in the history of plaintiff's law. It's time for her to stop the lies and start taking some accountability. This is Jay Edelson again. He hates her. Um, According to court documents, um, the reality star allegedly concealed the truth about her estranged husband's alleged misconduct throughout their marriage. Oh, this is like the whole thing, right? Like, oh, like, did she know? Did she not know? Um, Do, do, do. You can tell I didn't read this before talking about it, but I did just want to go through it. Okay. So Tom and Erica routinely misappropriated client settlement money to project an image of wealth and to prop up a lifestyle made for reality TV. As the layers have been pulled back more and more each day with the pending bankruptcies of Gerardi Keys and Tom, the tolerant and the tolerant claims of investigations that came in the wake of the firm's collapse, the real story is one that seems like a tale out of a novel. Gerardi Keys was little more than a criminal enterprise disguised as a law firm. They accused Jane of flaunting her wealth, acting as a front woman of the operation, selling to the world that Gerardi Keys was successful. Indeed, the Girardi Keys firm operated what we now know was the largest criminal racketeering enterprise in the history of plaintiff's law. Um, 
And to this day, Erica uses her significant public platform to lie about her own involvement and try to assist Tom and the others in getting away with it. Hmm. Well, I mean, they're really trying to get her. Look, do I think, like, she's, I mean, I don't know. I don't know anymore. You know, for a while there, I was like, all right, yeah, she didn't commit a crime. She's just a bad person. But maybe she did. I mean, at the end of the day, if she knew she committed a crime, right? So, and I think she knew. Like, everyone, even, like, even Kyle, like, fucking dumbass Richards was like, I've never met a lawyer that rich before. Because they're not. So, she knew. I I need more people to talk. I need her son to talk. I need his kids to talk. Like, why isn't anyone talking? This doesn't make any sense. There's nothing at risk because, you know, if his kids thought they were getting any money, they're not now because it doesn't exist. He's a poor shit. Um, Marcel the shell with shoes on is coming back. Um, I don't know when it's coming back. Let me see if I can find a date on here. But I was so pleased to see Marcel the shell again. Let's see. The script might, oh, a 90 minute runtime. Holy shit. Marcel, June 24th. Um, that's just like one of those like millennial, like pop culture moments. That was so weird. It was like when YouTube, I feel like was just like coming up, but like somehow everyone was obsessed and caught on. It was kind of like salad fingers. I was obsessed with salad fingers. Holy shit. If you guys have never seen salad fingers go watch it you might be terrified but for whatever reason you know this is why millennials are so fucked up we've been through like so much tragedy that like weird shit like that we were like this is great like this is i mean this is basically a lullaby but i mean who doesn't love marcel like we really need marcel finally bill aiden's car was fucking stolen right out of the garage they found it and it was returned. No one was her. Yada, yada, yada. Um, that just made me think of that song. Body, yada, 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 <laughs> yada, 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 yada. Um, but these things are so creepy to me. And like, clearly, like, it's people that have to work in the house. Like, how do you get in the garage? Know the garage code. Also, like, how do you steal the car or the keys in the car? The, do you know? Of a, I mean, this might all be out there. I just didn't like read that deep into it. Like, how do you get in the car? How do you drive the car? How do you know no one's home? Like, it's just all like, well, actually, people were home, which is like the sketchy part, but uh, the kids were home. It's just like these, it really does go to show. Like, honestly, like Kim, Kim did the right thing, like, as soon as she was robbed. And this is why I know, like, I personally don't think the robbery was like a hoax. I, she, that's why her house, well, one of the reasons, but that's one of the reasons why her house is like so bland and she has nothing because she like really doesn't want that much art. She doesn't keep any of her jewelry in her house. She doesn't keep any of her designer clothes in her house. She has them all in like a separate storage thing somewhere because if someone wants to rob her, fine, they can go rob the storage. Like they, she doesn't wear, I think all of her jewelry she wears a lot of times now is fake. Um, cause she just doesn't want to risk it. And like you can see with these housewives, all they like, all they do is flaunt their designer brands and all the shit they have. So yeah, people want to rob you. But it is bizarre that it just keeps happening to these housewives. Like, sorry, I just fucking yawned. I guess I'm bored of my own voice. Um, like, I don't know. Like, is it like a fucking like inside job? Like, is Bravo, like, is it a Bravo producer or like a disgruntled Bravo employee? Like, because it, it is weird that like, they have access, they just go into these people's houses and know exactly what they have. So, but I don't know. He got it back. I wonder if there's still any like vomit in the car from Jen. All right, let's dive into some shows. Um, I'm really just going to give some opinions on things. We're going to start with Jersey. Um, I loved the fight in the woods. It was exhilarating. Teresa came in so hot and then it kind of went into the episode with the baseball game. She was pissed because, uh, Margaret wouldn't wear her like leggings because it's a, it's a charity baseball game and Teresa's selling her leggings and portions are going to charity. How much? 
unclear, always unclear. It's probably like less than 10%. And so she wants everyone to wear them. And she sent everyone a text, like a really nice text asking everyone to wear them after she like basically berated them and told them how much she hated them. Um, so, and then Gia got mad at Margaret for not wearing them. And like, this is where it's starting to get a little messy because Gia is like really inserting herself in this season and inserting herself in the fights, which if she wants to be like a friend of her housewife, that's fine. But everyone knows it's going to be like the most like unrealistic, unfair situation because as soon as you say something to Gia, then it turns into don't talk to my kids. Teresa freaks out, blah, blah, blah. But, and then someone made a good point. It was either like it was one podcast that I was listening to. They were like, you know, we couldn't talk about Gia last season with the analogy, but now she's on the show. So can we talk about her now? It's like, like, it's really, it's like a, a conflict. Like it's really weird. And it's a weird dynamic. And it's one of those things where, like, I really like Gia. And I think in theory, we always liked when she was on the show. And maybe she, it would be good if she was on the show. But now that she's on the show more, I'm not sure I'm liking it. Because it's just giving, like, a really fair, like, unfair dynamic. Um, The baseball game was funny. Um, I was really upset Frankie Jr. was there. We didn't really get to see much of him. Not really sure why. Like, he was playing, but didn't see him in any scenes, except when he was missing every ball thrown to him by Louie on first base. Um, Jen fell. Very alarming. Hit her face. Um, But, yeah. One crazy thing, too, is Jackie talking about her eating disorder which I think is like very interesting and good that they're good that she's opening up about it. And what's interesting is that like, I feel like last year, the whatever she like made people think, including like her family that she was fine. And she's finally like being honest and saying she's not fine. And it is like a really scary thing. Like I think people think, Oh, if you're eating something, like you're still good. But like when she, in like a few episodes ago, when she went to that doctor, they're like, your heart rate is like so low or whatever. And like, they always say like, you know, you can have heart attack. Like that's how women with anorexia usually die. It's heart attacks. Cause like it fucks with your heart. Um, or not just women, anybody with anorexia. Um, but so it's just kind of scary. She said she hasn't like Evan was like, we can't go on vacation for more than four days because she just gets like obsessed with like her food and she will run out of things to eat and places to eat. And she needs to get back to like her routine eating. And then she said she hasn't had ice cream in like 20 years. Like imagine that is, in- that is insane. Like I'm not even trying to be funny, like no ice cream for 20 years. Holy shit. But there's more Marge and Teresa fighting next week. But I just kind of really wanted to touch on like the Gia of, of it all. I think it's bizarre. I did watch OC today from last week. And I think Noelle is terrible. I like, again, I know we need drama. So I'm trying to see it from like, is she good drama? And like, I don't know. I think she might just be fucking annoying. Honestly, like, did I think Kelly, Do- Kelly Dodd was awful off screen, but I still kind of liked her on the show. Like she was funny, even though she was awful and like the villain, but Noella is just terrible and annoying as shit with the fighting. Like I'm on with the Heather and Shannon fight. I'm actually on Shannon's side. Heather's being so weird, like about this call. And then on Heather and Noella fight, I'm on Heather's side. So we got a lot of, got a lot of things going on here. Um, I also hate the way Noella talks. It's like this. Oh, okay. Like when she opened the champagne at the end of the episode, she goes, love that sound. It's so weird. She literally sounds like a villain, like a Disney villain. It's awful. And I also like just don't know what her gain is. Like we, it's now pretty much common knowledge and a fact that like she has been wanting to be on the show for years and years and years. And She's talked about it with everybody. Like, she wants to be on the show. So, you know, you think she would do her homework. She would know how to act. Like, know how, what she wanted to do coming in. And clearly the, the strategy was to hate Heather and be up Shannon's ass. So I'm just curious what her strategy is, what her gain is, what, like, what she is trying to do to stay on the show. Because at this point, she's pissing off everybody except Shannon. And it's not, it's not going to work out for her. I will say I do think Emily is the shitster. 
She is the one bringing up all this shit to Shannon about everything everyone's saying behind her back. And then kind and then Shannon like says something like as a response. And then she takes that and tells the other person. So I will say Emily is not being very accountable for what she's doing. I mean, she's doing what we appreciate her to do, you know. So it's she's doing the right thing. I'm just it's just at least be accountable. I don't think the call, like, I think it's annoying they're being, they think she was trying to have more fun than the other girls. I think that's ridiculous. Like, I actually believe Shannon in that, that it wasn't meant to be a competition. They're all, like, women. Like, she just was, like, joking. I honestly took it as a joke. And, like, Heather, coming from someone who has a not successful podcast, no one cares about your podcast at all, okay? Not even if you're big enough to have your own live show about it. Like, no one's thinking like, wow, I need to go call Heather and congratulate her. Um, I also don't think Heather pushed anyone. Noella is insisting that Heather pushed someone that works for Bravo. The cameraman threw him up against the wall. First, she said she saw it. Then she said she didn't, but she could hear it. Then she said someone told her it happened. And we saw Heather push the camera down, which people do all the time. And it wasn't even aggressive. It was just like turning the camera. And Heather even looked at like the camera people and producers and were like, go ahead, like do an investigation if you want to. Like, this is ridiculous. So, and I don't know who told Noella and someone could have also told Noella like, oh, she just shoved me like, and that could have meant like, oh, she just kind of like pushed the camera. Who knows? Like, but Noella is so like on one to get at Heather that like, it's just, this is just a weird it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing. She's not letting go. And lastly, we're going to talk about Summer House. So I didn't watch this week's episode yet. I can't watch them all the time when I should in a timely manner because it's infuriating to me. I know everyone is saying this is like the best season yet. And I just don't know if I think that like, yes, there's drama, but that to me doesn't always make it the best show ever. I used to watch Summer House because there was some drama, but it honestly would just make me laugh and make me want to like have fun with my friends and party and go out. And like, like again, there was some drama, but it wasn't like insane. So like, I don't know. I just like, I'm just not enjoying it because someone is annoying me so bad. Honestly, it was last season was almost the same because like Hannah was so infuriating and I was really happy they got rid of her. Um, but let's just talk about the Sierra shit because I did see at least like that. And then I've been seeing clips from this episode that I didn't watch yet. And everyone is like, I know everyone's talking about this, but like everyone is up Sierra's ass. And like, I don't understand why, like, this is insanity to me. Absolute insanity. For one thing, she was the aggressor. She's the one that stood up stood over everybody, screamed at them. Like, there's no denying that. And she kind of just like, and came out of nowhere doing that. Like, Paige chimed in, and then Danielle chimed in, and then Sierra just really didn't like that Danielle chimed in, even though Paige chimed in, and just lost it. And she was pointing in her face. She fucking, like, the way she threw that glass, it wasn't at the table. It wasn't a la... Lisa Richards, let or Lisa Rinna, let's talk about the husband. You don't talk about my husband. Glass on the table. No. This bitch was aiming for Danielle's face. And it shattered. Do we not remember the Real Housewives of Potomac Monique fight? Do we not remember the drama that caused? Yes, Monique like grabbed her hair, but there was also glass thrown. And the glass was like a big thing about it all. Do we not remember when Amanda threw a plastic cup near Hannah and everyone had a fit? Remember, near Hannah. She threw her plastic cup near Hannah on the ground because she was mad at her and wanted to get her attention because Hannah was walking away. Hannah talked about that every day until she got kicked off the fucking show, saying it was violent. So everyone's hugging Sierra, saying, are you okay? Are you okay? Oh no, it's okay. Like blah blah blah. Hanging out with her in the bed. Sarah doesn't isn't even like crying. Like no remorse looks to be in her face. Also, someone correct me if I'm wrong, please. But I've been kind of stalking her stories and post after last week's episode, and then even like a little bit this week with Monday's episode. Nothing. 
Actually, she was invited on Watch What Happens Live. But in terms of like her feeling remorse, her saying like violence is never the answer, nope, doesn't give a shit. So I'm a little confused. I don't really understand what's going on with that. And I really do like Lindsay. And I, I'm on also on the team of like, Austin's the problem in this, but the way Sierra is going about it is terrible. And I keep saying it, Sierra and Lindsay and Danielle aren't, or and Paige aren't friends. So this whole bullshit of Sierra doing this narrative of, you know, I thought we were friends, we're friends, respect each other. You hate her. Like they are not friends. They're on the same show together. They have, they hang out on the weekends, but I don't know. It's, and that's also infuriating to me because it's just like, what's happening here? Like, what is this like all of a sudden, like double standard? Why is no one holding her accountable? If anyone else threw a glass physically at someone else in the house, there'd be issues. And then Paige just like laughing the whole time. So yeah, I don't know. I don't even like Paige anymore. I haven't liked her since kind of like the tail end of last season either. I just think they're mean girls. I think, I don't know. I'm just not a fan, you know? So not a fan of Paige, not a fan of Sierra, not a fan of Craig. Like I'm telling you, I'm going to, I have a prediction. I'm going to put money on it. They're going to ruin the show. They're going to ruin the fucking show. And then we're going to lose our summer house. Okay, guys, now it's time for the witchy shit. Okay, a long time ago in some older episodes, I talked about chakras. There are seven chakras, and I went through each one and what they represent and their meaning and whatnot. I don't want to do that again, but I do think it's good to get a little refresher. So I would definitely recommend looking them up, maybe looking into some Reiki. Um, But I did want to like find some more like detailed little facts about chakras and how we can use them in our day to day life. And ways we can kind of like interpret our chakras that's not so straightforward i originally looked into this because of my fucking like neck ache that i keep getting i've been getting it a lot um like it seems like every few weeks at this point this is just like a really bad one so it just kind of got me thinking like different ways to heal so just a reminder of the very basics we have seven chakras you have your root chakra sacral solar plexus heart throat third eye and crown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over, I found this article um, that will go over the five things you should know about chakras. And I'll put the link in the description of the podcast. So the first thing is chakras alone won't heal you. So basically what I came to find, um, you know, They just, they can't be the only thing, right? So chakras work on a level of consciousness and their effectiveness depends on the level of consciousness, which is mostly on a higher level of consciousness. So the energies heal, but this is only short term. It's only a short term solution and you need to have a long term solution to your chakra energy problems. So you need to balance your chakras, chakra healing techniques, and long term solutions as you find the true cause of the problem with your chakra energy. A higher level of consciousness will enable you to see a possible problem before it even reaches your energy centers, which will then help you find an effective solution. So this makes sense to me. When I got my Reiki session, I only ever got one because it was right before COVID. And I keep saying I need to get other ones, but you know, you know, the neck aches are sending me to spend all my money. The neck aches and the pimples are making me spend my money on like facials and massages. So I, I haven't had the funds for Reiki yet, but It makes sense because when I went to the Reiki, she talks about you. She talks to you about what's going on first. What what are you there to heal? Are you there to heal something with a relationship? Are you there to heal something about your passion, your in life, your purpose in life? Um, you know your anxiety, like anything like that, like your inability to speak your mind. Those are all like major problems that will probably not go away with one Reiki session. The Reiki session tries its best to unblock the chakras. They get the energy moving again where there's blocks. And then the idea of that is that you come to this after maybe a few sessions and talking with people, you come to this higher consciousness of knowing when things are starting to get blocked or knowing when a problem comes in and stopping it before it affects your energy centers. So I think like the most basic example I can give 
is if you're having a block in your heart chakra and you kind of feel your way slipping like bad relationships or problems with relationships or you not letting yourself love or whatever you're finding yourself like feeling those feelings again and you can feel yourself kind of retreating back and potentially your heart chakra getting blocked and energy getting stuck there um the idea is that after a lot of practice you'll be at a higher consciousness and see that happening from fucking miles away and not let it happen to you the next fact is there are more than seven chakras so to determine the right system you first need to understand that chakras aren't like organs in the physical body contrary to what you may think there are more than seven chakras though the seven are the most common The seven chakras in the human energy body are represented by seven colors and have seven and have a name and a meaning, but there are also other systems associated with how the human energy body works. So I've heard of two, like going to any like Western or Eastern medicine practices, like acupuncture and stuff like that. Like they really work with the energy systems in the body. So yeah, it's like we have these basic chakra points. But those chakras then kind of like web out into other energy sources in the body. And it's not like they're like, like it says, they're not your muscles. They're not your organs. They're just kind of like other waves of energy. So just know that like just working on once, like you might be able to find other sources of like therapy through other different types of medicine or doctors that could help you, you know, unblock even like really tough situations or tough areas in your body. The next one is belief is everything when it comes to chakras. Believing in everything, even that which you cannot see, is very important. This is the same when it comes to chakras. Because most people can't see chakras, they do not believe in them. The chakra system explains more about energy flows in the human body that exist in the higher levels of consciousness. And you need to first believe that they exist for you to see and feel them. Once your consciousness is high enough, you will be able to notice their existence. So that goes with everything, right? Like none of this stuff we like to talk about, manifestation, law of assumption, law of attraction, none of that stuff is going to work if you don't believe in it. If you don't believe that we are full of these energy portals in our body and if we don't believe that with certain practices and sessions and of having a higher consciousness, if you don't believe that that can help you in your life and help you clear out these blocks, then obviously it's not going to work. <laughs> it's basically like the law of attraction when you like attract negativity, like nothing is going to work if you don't believe in it. So definitely do your research on chakras. Don't just like dive into shit. Just don't go to a Reiki session just because you want to. Like you need to believe in it for it to work, for it to have meaning. Like I'm not going to go to church on Easter Sunday and ask God to send me a million dollars and expect him to because I just I don't believe in God. So same same thing. Next one is each of the seven chakras has its own intuition. Chakras are energy routers that connect you to a larger energy network. For you to make good use of your chakras and your intuition, you need to establish the communication with each energy center of your body. With proper intuition towards understanding each individual chakra, you will be able to create your own visualization techniques that would help you hear what your chakras are trying to tell you as well as use them to your advantage. So intuition is like everything. Like it truly does. Like I should talk more about intuition one of these episodes because that little voice inside your head, your intuition is absolutely real. Um, You know, I asked when I had one session um, with my Akashic like an Akashic reading, reading. And like, same with like guides. They're like, if you hear that little voice in your head to like, tell you like, oh, should I wear the red shirt or the blue shirt? And you're just like, oh, red shirt. Like that's a guy that's someone guiding you. That's your intuition. That's like giving you an answer that you need. So when you're working with your chakras, um, really try to hone into your intuition and how you feel and just go with it. Don't overthink anything communicate with your mind and your body and your energy and just go with what feels right. And lastly, a blocked chakra is not the main reason cause of your health problems. That's the other reason why I looked this up. Um I'm I'm always in for a quick fix, people. Always in for a quick fix. When I gained like 
I, when I weighed the heaviest I've ever weighed a few years ago and gained so much weight and couldn't lose it, I went to the doctor to get blood work and I was literally praying for a health problem. I was like, please tell me my thyroid is fucked up and that's why I am legitimately 20 pounds overweight, please. No, I didn't. So I'm always looking for a quick fix. I'm like, oh, what chakra can I tap into to make my neck it go away? Not going to help. So it says, though blocked chakras have an effect on your health, they aren't always the major cause of your health issues. Blocked chakras are caused when there is no energy flow on the higher levels of consciousness. Even with the presence of these chakras, in case one of your chakras is is either too open or too closed, then this has a negative impact on your health. Learn more about the seven chakras and tune in with the natural energy cycles of your body. This information will help you to connect all your physical, emotional, and spiritual imbalances with the chakras that empower them to enable you to balance your chakras and live a healthy life. So again, it makes total sense, right? Like your chakras can be blocked or they can be too open or too closed, but they're that way for a reason. There's something else going on. You need to fix multiple things in your body, like a mind, body, soul, before you can fix just one thing. Um, again, putting like a crystal on the back of my neck isn't going to un- unclog something and make my neck go away. Like if I'm having a block because I'm manifesting some type of anxiety, some type of stress, then I need to work to figure that out with my chakra and with my energy. So um, I think chakras are super interesting. I actually need to get way more back into it. There was a point in time where I was really obsessed with them and I almost, I was looking up like Reiki, like how to get certified in Reiki. But again, COVID happened and I just like left it. Um, which at the end of the day, I'm, I'm glad I did. Cause then I just did something like this, but, um, you know, I definitely recommend looking more into it. Cause it's just another way to kind of utilize it's, an, it's another way to get in tune with your body, with your mind, a good way to like meditate and just kind of like also something fun to learn about. Now it's time for Witch of the Week. Wow. This week, I'm going to talk about a TikTok star, Drew Afuello. Not sure if I'm saying that last name right. That's what it looks like. So Drew is always on my For You page. She's verified. She has almost 7 million followers. And she's fucking hilarious because she got famous from just fucking roasting piece of shit guys. And no, this isn't the, the annoying like men can't do anything right. No, these are men are disgusting. Honestly, the other side of TikTok that I'm not on is terrifying. Because it's full of men literally calling women fat, calling them ugly, calling them disgusting, like putting them down, being so incredibly awful. And basically what happens is Drew gets tagged and then she stitches the video and does a hilarious response um, to them. And it's just funny. It does a few things in my mind. It points out this thing that we aren't all over this. Like, we aren't all equal. Not all men are great. They are still fucking terrible to women and think they can get away with it. And then it's just funny and it's a way for women to come together and laugh and maybe not get their feelings hurt that bad. And yeah, she does poke fun back at the guy, but you know, he deserves it at that point, don't you think? I think so. So everyone go follow her. She does have a podcast as well with one of her friends. So if you follow her on Instagram, I think it's linked in there. But I just think she's funny and I think it's. I like showcasing people like this because at the end of the day, I think they're doing something great because she puts herself out in the line to be completely made fun of. And she does. People make fun of her too and call her names, but she doesn't give a shit because she's doing it for the greater good. So thank you, Drew, for being a dumbass boy bashing witch. Okay, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for listening. Again, my apology for missing an episode. Keep a lookout for any new Patreon episodes. I'm still trying to get my shit working on Facebook. It's like just not working. Um, But I will send out the page once that's ready. So please send any links, friends, or podcast episodes to your friends, your family. Please leave a review. I really appreciate it. And I'll be back next week. Love you. Bye.